Most parents think their own children are miracles and the brainiest or prettiest people, the bravest soldiers, the best ballerinas, the most special people on earth, don't they? Well, there was one family where this was definitely not the case. Mrs. Wormwood, nine months pregnant, wants more than anything to dance in the biannual international amateur salsa and ballroom dancing championship in Paris. She does not want another baby. Her husband, Mr. Wormwood, doesn't much care, but if there's going to be a new baby, it has to be a boy. The doctor, who is delivering the beautiful new girl Matilda, can't believe these parents. Oh my word, here's an ugly little fella. Mr. Wormwood, this child is a girl, a beautiful, beautiful girl. I don't suppose we could exchange it for a boy, could we? This is the worst day of my life! Five years later, Mr. Wormwood, on the phone, that time he was running his dodgy business, dressing up old banger cars, luxury li limousines. Suddenly, Mrs. Wormwood screams from the next room. When her uh, husband rushes in, she shouts that their five-year-old daughter is doing it again. Doing it again! Five years on and she's reading books. Books, if you don't mind. That is not normal. The child is clearly an idiot. Listen to this. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was an age of wisdom. Who do you think you're off? You're off to school in a few days' time, and I know the headmistress, Agatha Trunchbull. Imagine what she's going to do to a horrible, squeaky little goblin like you, boy. I'm a girl. Now, Matilda is no pushover. She's got a powerful sense of imagination and a very strong, strong sense of what's right and what's wrong. While her mother is brushing her teeth, Matilda thinks of a plan to get back at her parents. When her mother leaves the bathroom, Matilda sneaks in and makes her mother's platinum hair dye with her father's, with her father's oil of violet hair tonic. Shortly afterward, her father applies the lotion to the hair that he's so proud of. Matilda tells her audience that just because you're small doesn't mean you have to put up with injustice. Your, your hair, it's green! My hair's green! What on earth did you do that for? Why do you want your hair green? I didn't do anything. I don't want green hair. Maybe you used some of Mummy's hair dye by mistake. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. So they say their subsequent fall was inevitable. They never stood a chance they were written that way. Innocent victims of their story. Romeo and Juliet was written in the sun before they even met. That love and
wanted to go to the library. Here she is, sitting on the floor, looking through some books. Mrs. Phelps, the librarian, greets her happily and asks her to tell a story. Remember, Matilda has a strong imagination. Once upon a time, yes, once upon a time, the two greatest circus performers in the world fell in love and got married. People would come from miles around to see their skills and their love for each other. But though they loved each other, though they were famous and everyone loved them, they were sad. We do not have a child, they said. Their sadness drew, drew them to even more dangerous feats, and they decided to perform the most dangerous feat ever known to man. It was called the burning woman hurling through the air with dynamite in her hair over, the sh over sharks and spiky objects caught by the man in a locked safe. It's the first day of school. The new kids skip up to the gates, full of hope and confidence. Just as they reach the main gate, the big kids rush out, terrifying them. testing sound coming for a speaker system. The big kids freeze and then so do the new kids. Agatha Trunchbull, the headmistress, speaks. 
prisoners Letchworth, Rotwinkle, Figglebottom and Gubbinsworth report to my study immediately for re-education. What is the school motto? Babinatum est magnatum, Miss Trunchbull. Babinatum est magnatum. Children are maggots. Back to work, maggots. The new kids are in class. Miss Honey, gentle, kind and loving Miss Honey is their teacher. She starts with the two times tables. My name is Miss Honey and today is a very special day. Your first day at school. Now, do any of you know your two times tables? Wonderful, Matilda, isn't it? Stand and do as many as possible you can. One times two is two. Two times two is four. Seven times two is 14. And 12 times two is 24. Now, this is much harder, so don't worry if you don't get it, but 487 times two. 974. Miss Honey realises that Matilda is a special child, a gifted child who should go up in an older class. She stands trembling outside the headmistress's office door. Several times she tries to knock, but her courage fails her. Finally, she gives a timid knock and goes in. Well, don't stand there like a wet tissue. Get on with it. Oh, yes, there's, there's in my class, there's a little girl, Matilda Wormer. I'm Miss Trunchbull, Matilda is a genius and should be placed in the top form of the millennium. What? But she's a squib, a shrew, an unhatched tadpole. We cannot just place her in the top form. What's about the rules, honey? Rules! How do you think I became English Hammer Throwing Champion of 1969? By keeping to the rules. If you want to teach success, you have to force the little squids to toe the line. Back at the Wormwood's house, Mr. Wormwood is in a very bad mood. The Russians, who were supposed to be buying his dodgy cars and making him rich, have caught him as well. His green hair didn't help. In a fit of temper, he blames it all on Matilda, who is reading as usual. And what's this? Another flaming book? What's wrong with the telly? She's got no respect, that one. It's all books and stories. Here's what I think of your book. A man with a jaunty hat will always get respect. Back at school, Matilda witnesses a terrible piece of injustice when headmistress Trunchbull blames Nigel for pouring treacle on her chair. The older kids tell Matilda about the worst punishment of all, the dreaded choking. Despite her terror, Matilda rescues Nigel from, from his terrible fate by pretending he's been sleeping for ages under a pile of clothes. There's a place you are sent if you have been good and it's made to fight. We put him under the, these coats for safety. Didn't we? Didn't we? Yes. yes! Is it time for school yet, Mum? Meantime, Miss Honey determined to do her best for Matilda. Visit her parents. Miss Wormwood's at home practicing her dancing with her rather greasy partner, Rodolfo. Rodolfo and Miss Wormwood explain to Miss Honey why it's stupid to be clever. What do you want, Miss Chutney? It's Miss Honey. Well, as you know, children, Matilda is in the bottom class, and children in the bottom class aren't expected to read. Well, stop her reading then. Lord knows we tried. I'm in the zone, doll. I can feel it in my hips. Don't waste this. I'm not in favour of girls getting on leather pants, Miss Cheesy. Girls are supposed to think about makeup and hair dye. Looks is more important than books. Now look at you. Look at me. You chose books and I chose looks. While Miss Honey's at the Wormwoods, Matilda's in the library telling Mrs. Phelps the next part of her story about the acrobat and her husband, the escapologist. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the burning woman hurling through the air with dynamite has been cancelled. Cancelled because my wife is pregnant. No, no, what happened next? I don't know yet. I'll tell you tomorrow. Back at school, there's more trouble. 
The Trunchbull accuses Matilda of eating a slice of her chocolate cake. Suddenly, Bruce Bogtrotter gives the most enormous burp you've ever heard, and Trunchbull realises that Bruce ate the cake. As his first punishment, Bruce is forced to eat the biggest chocolate cake imaginable, brought in by the cook. All of it, all by himself. Then she drags him off to the chokey. Bruce Bog Trotter. Yes, miss? You liked my cake, didn't you, Bruce? Ah, uh, yes, Miss Trunchbull, and, and I'm very sorry. Oh, no, no, no. As long as you enjoyed the cake, that's the main thing. Is it? Yes, Bog Trotter, it is. Oh, uh, well, I did. Thank you. Wonderful, marvellous. That makes me so happy. Gives me a warm glow in my lower intestine. Oh, cook. What's the matter, Bog Trotter? Lost your appetite? Well, um, yes, I'm, I'm full. Oh, no, you're not full. I will tell you when you're full, and I say that criminals like you are not full until you have eaten the entire cake. But! You haven't got time for but eat. But I can't eat at all! Oh, this will still be sick. He should have thought of that before he made a pact with Satan and decided to steal my cake. Let's eat a slice, or even two, Bruce. It might be nice, but even you, Bruce, have to admit. waits in the library for, Matil for the end of Matilda's story. The acrobat hugs her husband before they finish the most dangerous act of all time. The crowd held their breath as she hurled over the sharp and spiky objects. They watched as flames crept off her dress. The door of the safe flung open and the escapeologist reached out one huge muscled arm to catch his wife and child and... Oh my god, look! The escapeologist just used a touch too much 
fire to kill the flames, and suddenly their hands became slippy, and she fell. She broke every bone in their body, but lived long enough to have her child. Then she died. Shortly after at the Wormwood house, Mr. Wormwood is jumping about, shouting about his own cleverness into tricking Russians into buying 150 old banner cars. Mrs. Wormwood and Matilda react very differently to the news, and Mr. Wormwood delivers a terrible blow. Fantastic, Ono! I'll be able to afford Rudo for it all day long. But that's unfair! You just cheated them! Working my fingers to the bone, tomorrow I'm going to go to the, down to that library and tell the told bag you're never to be let in again. To comfort herself, Matilda continues her story. It's so real, her characters actually appear. The wicked aunt has thrown the escapologist's little girl, about Matilda's age, into a dark cellar and locked the door. The little girl huddles in the corner, shivering and crying. Matilda tries to comfort her, but the girl doesn't notice. Suddenly, there's a bang on the door, and the escapologist, home early, bursts in and both girls run to him. He puts his arm around both of them, and then, and then the girls fall asleep from exhaustion. Then the ex escapologist makes a promise to his sleeping daughter. This demon, this villain, this monster, bullying children is a game, is it? Well, let's see what she thinks she can do with the wrath of a grown man standing before her. And that was the last the little girl ever saw of her father. He was never seen again, and he never ever came home. At school, the Trunchbull is once again on the rampage. Lavender has put a new in Trunchbull's drinking glass. The Trunchbull screams and stands on the chair, and lowers her head and makes it for Eric, grabbing him by the ears. Matilda can't take any more. Leave him alone, you big fat Billy! I shall crush you, I shall pound you, I shall dissect you, I shall feed you to the termites, and then I shall smash! invites Matilda to a very simple home with a box for a table and a mattress made of straw. They sit on the floor and have tea and then Miss Honey tells Matilda a story which will remind you of another one you've already heard. My father was a wonderful man called Magnus but unfortunately he died when I was very young and I was left with my aunt. She was a terror. The way I got my job as a teacher she presented me with a bill for looking after me all those years. Miss Honey? Is this your father's scar? Yes, my mother gave it to my father before she died. She was an acrobat? How did you, and my father was an escapologist? Who was your aunt? You know my aunt Matilda. Miss Trunchbull. And the very same Miss Trunchbull is on the attack again, threatening to put the children into choking, but this time the children are fighting back. Whoa! What are you doing? What's going on? Stop this!
for each and every one of you. Look, look, the chalk is moving. It's writing something. Agatha, this is Magnus. Give, give Jenny back her house and, th and then leave. Or I'll get you like you got me. Run! 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 At long last, and after a great deal of trouble, justice triumphs, and we have a happy ending to this story. Mr. Wormwood has been found out by the Russian mafia he was trying to fool, and the Wormwoods are forced to leave town. Miss Honey, now comfortably off and living in a big house, has a special request. Let Matilda stay here for me. I'll treat you with love, respect and care. I'll pay for everything. Would you like that, Matilda? Yes, 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 please! Well, we're a bit short of room. They, they have found, found each other. other.